Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Lush Gardener. So today I was planning to do a little bit of leaf propagation. So I thought I will share uh, the video with you guys. Uh, now the soil media that I'm using over here is 50-50. Uh, uh, basically 50% of garden soil and 50% of coco peat. Uh, now you might be wondering why I'm using coco peat. You will get to know in the later part of the video as we discuss about it. Uh, so nothing much not a very fancy soil mix that is required in order to uh, start your leaf propagation it's a very simple uh, material that you need i'm sure a lot of gardeners do have coco peat or even peat moss and uh, garden soil now please don't use only garden soil the reason behind that is it can get compact over the period of time and remember uh, our leaf propagation the roots are very fragile we do not want to have a soil mix that is going to turn compact over the period of time so if you're using garden soil you do not have coco peat or peat moss then you will have to use a generous amount of uh, some kind of gritty material now that could be either sand pumice perlite uh, you can even use vermiculite as well but the soil has to be loose porous and well draining so please don't use only garden soil apart from that this garden soil is the only organic matter uh, there is nothing else in the soil it is just the natural uh, garden soil there is no fertilizers added in this this soil is not added with any kind of manure it is just a basic soil mix that's what we need we do not need fertilizers at this point of time so let me quickly mix all of this and i will give you an update now the container that i'm using for this uh, leaf propagation is a large tray i don't know the measurements you can take anything even if you have a small container it's absolutely okay i'm planning to do a kind of mass propagation so i wanted a large tray so that i can accommodate as many leaves as i can now the most important thing if you are from a location or if you are from an environment wherein your echeverias are going to go dormant during the winters it is best and it is advisable not not to put them into leaf propagation because most probably they might not get propagated but if you have them fallen out like let's say accidentally you have knocked off some leaves of your echeveria it's absolutely fine to put it into the soil and see what happens but do not take them out in the purpose of uh, leaf propagation especially the ones that are in or are hitting their dormancy for me it's not much of an issue as i've said this my environment is very mild the winters are not very extreme it's very mild winter so even my echeverias tend to get propagated but i try to focus more on grapto areas grapto sedums uh, grapto petalums uh, or patchophytums patchoverias these are the varieties that i prefer to or i give priority for leaf propagation during the winters but again i am okay with propagating even areas so our tray is ready i've already made uh, the drain holes which is very important please do not put your leaf propagations in a container that does not have a drain hole we do not want the water to get pulled into the tray so let me fill up this with the soil mix i'm going to mix both of these and fill this up and get back to you so guys now that our soil is filled in this tray all you have to do is just press against the soil to just level it up and once you are done leveling the soil now guys there are a couple of options how you can plant them uh, some people what they do is they use a stick and then they place their uh, leaf propagations uh, over the stick this is just to keep the leaf above uh, the soil it depends whichever you are okay with so this is how a lot of people tend to do it but what i do is because i don't have so many sticks what i do is i just make a marking in the soil like this like this so we know that we have a line over here and then i have my succulent leaves these are uh, graptoveria tutubans that i will be propagating so what i'll do is i will keep placing them like this so i know where exactly the line is and i will start keeping them now there is another reason for this line this is where we will be watering it uh, we are going to place our succulent leaves like this. You do not need to push them deep into the soil. You just need to lay them on the upper layer of soil like this. 
So now I don't have a lot of leaves, but this is just an example. So this is how it's going to look like. And when I'm going to be watering, I will be only watering in this line that you see. Now this can be achieved with a thin nozzle or you can even use a syringe as well. I used to use a syringe before. I'm going to get it again because that makes things much easy. So with the syringe, you can just water this line that you see. So that is how the watering is conducted. This is much, much easy. And after that, if you want, you can make another line like this. And then your second row of succulent leaves will come in the same uh, position that I have placed these. So as you can see, it is pretty simple. Now another question, uh, why do we use coco peat uh, for leaf propagation and not for adult succulents? So we need to understand that over here, these are our babies and they require a little bit more moisture as compared to our adult succulents. The reason behind that is uh, these leaves are going to be very very small they are going to be very tiny and they have not yet formed into the proper anatomy of the succulent. When I say a proper anatomy basically uh, the leaves are not going to be very plump the leaves are not going to be large the leaves are not going to be chubby which means that they cannot store a lot of water in the leaves. Apart from that they do not have a proper stem uh, they do not have a proper root system which is well established at this point of time so the coco peat is what is going to help the uh pups in growing as of now the pups will take the nutrients and water from the mother leaf eventually they'll start to root out uh, the roots are going to be very delicate they are going to be very fragile they cannot absorb a lot of water into the pup so this coco peat is what is going to help so these pups are going to be more dependent on the external uh, factors in order to survive Whereas in our adult succulents, they do not need coco peat. They do not need a lot of moisture because they already have a good set of leaves which are plump, which are chubby, which tends to store water. So they do not depend upon an external factor to give them water. They store that water and they keep in the leaves and that's what they tend to use. That is not the same case with our leaf propagation. And this leaf propagation is going to take a very, very long time. So we have to have a lot of patience. Uh, again, I'm not going to be watering them because none of them have roots. They all have pups, very tiny pups. They have just started off. As you can see, they are just starting off, but they do not have roots. So we cannot water. We only water when we start noticing that there are uh, roots because when there are roots only that's when the uh, leaf propagation will be able to absorb water. So that's all about it guys. It is pretty simple. This is going to take some time for me to fill up the entire tray because I have to select some leaves, let them callus and then I'm going to add them into this tray. So it is going to take some time, but then the process is going to stay the same. I will keep making these markings so I know exactly where I have to water and uh, this is how things are going to work. So guys, that's all about it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing to it. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep propagating.